guys, I'm in Apapa with my friend Wally from Bitcoin Podcast El Salvador. The best podcast to learn about Bitcoin and also to learn Spanish at the same time. Definitely recommend it. So hi Wally, how are you? I'm good, hey, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here in the Monadelic uh, channel, right? It's awesome. I love what you're doing, man. I love what you're doing, man. So tell us more about your podcast. So basically the podcast is to teach Salvadorian people not Salvadorian, but in general, in Spanish content, the fundamentals and the usage of Bitcoin. The reason I created it was for that, because it's needed here in El Salvador, right? There's not that many podcasts that actually talk about the usage and the fundamentals. Everybody talks about is money when it compared to Bitcoin. Or Other, investment. That's it, you know, and that's something that I do not want to do. I want to talk about the fundamentals and the usage because I think it's key for Salvadorian people to understand that, especially here in the Bitcoin capital. So that's it. That's pretty much it. That's, that's how I started the podcast, just, just for that, to make my voice louder, to help people understand the fundamentals and the usage of Bitcoin. Yeah, and that's great because all the expats that live in El Salvador and want to learn uh, English, they watch your podcast. Uh, Spanish. Spanish, yeah, to learn Spanish. Yeah, to learn Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. True. That's the other one, right? Besides the fundamentals and the usage, Bitcoiners actually see it just to learn Spanish as well. Exactly. So you guys, if you're learning Spanish, you need to watch this podcast. Watch it. And you're going to learn more fundamentals. <laughs> so Wally, what brought you back to El Salvador? Bitcoin. Tell us your story. Okay. <laughs> Bitcoin. Nah, so, so I was born here, right? I was born in El Salvador. Um, I was born in the 80s when the war was going on. Apopa at that time was gang infested. You had gangs everywhere, all around Apopa. It was controlled by the gangs practically. Who likes to live in that type of environment? It was pretty hostile environment, you know? Nobody was really achieving anything here in Apopa. Everybody was just day by day living. Surviving. Surviving, there you go. Thinking how to put food on their plate for the night or the day after. And, and I grew up in the States. I grew up in Los Angeles, right? So coming here to Apopa and seeing this, I was like in a big cultural shock, right? Because I was like, man, how, how do people survive here? How, what do people do here? There's, you got gangs. You got minimum wage that's horrible. And then you got a whole family to feed and take care of, right? I mean, man, I, I didn't understand it, right? And, and now that I'm back, I left 2014 from, from El Salvador. I went to China. I was living in China for about eight years. I came back uh, 2021, uh, at the end of 2021, and uh, the Bitcoin law was coming in. And now El Salvador has changed completely, you know? It's a lot safer now. Uh, people are happier, people are buying things. You see a lot more people walking now. If we would have come here like, I don't know, one year ago, two years ago, it would have been very different and it would have been dangerous. Yeah, it wouldn't be that different as, as far as environment-wise, uh -huh. but, but it would be dangerous because ah, okay. it was so controlled. As soon as you walk in, a popa, they already know, they're already watching you, the gang members. They're watching you, who is this guy? What is he doing here? You know, and they'll go investigate. So, did you have any direct experience with gang members? Did you have any situation that was like scary? A lot, bro. A lot. Really? You know, a lot. Uh, I got to the point that, man, El Salvador, I, I even got my gun license when I was living here because when I was living here, they were doing that 30 murders a day, bro. 30 murders a day. So, it could have been me, it could have been you, it could have been anybody. anybody. So Wally, what was your most uh, scary, your scariest encounter with gang members? Your, the worst experience you had, if you want to share it with us. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, their experience is right in. I have one that was pretty scary. Actually, a few, but I'm going to talk about one. I was living in El Salvador from 2010 to 2014. And I was living the day by day, right? And my paycheck was always not enough, right? And so then I was like, I had a car, so gas was going up at that moment. I just said, you know what, I'm gonna take the bus to work. I was working in San Salvador. So I would travel from Mapopa to San Salvador. It's like a 45 minute bus ride. So I was taking the bus, I was cool. There's a guy next to me, two guys next to me, behind me and two in front of me. And then two more get up in, and uh, by the doors. The guy behind me grabs my shirt, picks up my shirt. I grab his hand. The guy next to me stands up, the two in front stand up. And I was just like, what the? Uh, sure, right? So I was like, oh man. And then they were like, where are you from? I'm like man i'm going to work you know I, I showed them my id where i worked and everything and they're like where you live at because right here it, it was based on where you lived at and if you were lived in the in the enemy's neighborhood they consider you part of them right and then it was bad so anyway so i told them where i lived and uh 
I guess they made a phone call to that area to see if they knew me, if I was from anywhere or whatever. And I, during that moment, bro, that moment was, because I kept looking at the reflection on the bus and I was like, man, how the hell did I just finish in a bus? You know, how, how did my life just end in the bus, you know? And, uh, you know, you're just waiting seconds for them to say, what are they going to do with you, right? And then I guess they called the gang members where I lived at and they were like, hey, do you know this guy? And they're like, yeah, he goes to work. He doesn't get involved with anybody. They're like, all right, cool. So then they just told me, all right, you're good. Don't worry. We just don't want, we don't want to see you with the enemy. I was like, what the fuck, you know? Man, I never got on that yeah. bus again, you know, because... I mean, it's my life. Do, do the gang members lift up your shirt to see if you have tattoos? And That's tattoos, what they were checking. Yeah. And, and because I grew up in, the, in Los Angeles, right? So my style was Los Angeles style. Hat backwards or whatever. So they saw that and it catches their attention. Yeah. Even because the gangs, that's where they come from. Yeah, from Los Angeles. The Salvador gang comes from Los Angeles, from the United States. But anyway, that was a worst experience. And I'm sure a lot of Salvadorian people have gone through a lot of stories, you know? El Salvador, people used to walk around with two phones, bro. Their good phone, yeah, and then their throwaway phone. Their throwaway phone was the one that when you ride the bus, because every so often they would go in the bus and be like, look, it was the gang members. They're gonna tell you like this. Okay, guys, uh, we don't want any problems. We're just here, whatever collaboration you can give us and your phones. <laughs> and they'll just come out with a bag and come on, come on, come on, come on, and they're gone. So people would have two phones. Their good phone, they'll hide it, and their cheap phone, the other one, okay, here. That's awful. That's bad, bro, because Let me ask you something. How, it becomes a normal. How did the uh, the other gang members down in the city know about you? Because then, so the gang members on the bus, they called somebody else and they knew about you. How did they know about you? Just because they saw you, what happened? Yeah, just because, they, so before, when I came to El Salvador, to live in El Salvador, I lived here in Apopa, right? And mm -hmm. it's infested with gangs. So as soon as I got to where I was gonna live at, gang members started like, who was him? Who is that guy? Ah, Who is that guy? Okay. You know? Mm. So then they got to see that it was me. I didn't have no no affiliation. No affiliation or nothing. Through. It was just me. Because they're so organized that they'll call wherever you're from, their nearest gang, and ask them about you and they'll find out who you are. So you said the keywords right there, organized. You know, I'm from Italy, you know, home of the mafia and organized crime. So when I think about organized crime and I think about El Salvador, if I'm not wrong, El Salvador is the only country in the world that has solved the problem of organized crime. You know, I'm curious to see if anywhere else in the world these results have been achieved, you know, in yeah. squashing the gang members or any sort of organized crime. So, I mean, what you're bringing up right now is a, a good point. Why? Why? Because um, what Naib just did proves that if every country wanted to do it, they, they could do it's it. Possible. But they don't. <laughs> you know, this is what makes me think, is that, you know why there is all this uh, fad, fear, uncertainty, doubt, all these lies, all this attack on El Salvador and the government and what they're achieving? I wonder if that's because in other countries in the world, especially in Latin America, the government don't want the people learn that it's actually possible to solve this problem. That it's actually possible if the government wants to, if the government is not corrupt, if the government is not partnering it with the crime, uh, the criminals in the country, maybe they can solve the problem. Because Bukele is setting up this example and so everybody else in the world is looking at it and is thinking, oh, wait a second, if Bukele did it, why we cannot do it here in Mexico, Bolivia, Colombia, Guatemala, Belize? Everybody's wanting think. the things, it, right? It makes you think, bro. It makes you think, like, what are the governments doing, really? You know what I mean? Do they use this as a tactic to maintain people, to keep them scared? Is it a business? What is it, you know? Because if a small country that was known as the murder capital of the world can actually flip a, throw, a whole 360 just because the president wanted to for his people, why can't the rest of the countries do the same thing? And it took uh, less than one year, I think, since the war on gangs started, you know? It's interesting that now, Bukele started another war, war on corruption in this country. So let's see, he's gonna make, build another huge prison. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna no. build uh, another prison facility for blue collar or white collar crimes. Yeah, and, and, so, and, and it was again, it's probably gonna get full, bro, because 
I mean, El Salvador lived on corruption. I, I'm sure every country lives on corruption. Every country. So there was this comedian. I don't know. I don't remember who was it. I, in a sketch, it says something like, uh, corruption is so endemic into the country, the United States, mm -hmm. that if you remove corruption, the old system would crash. It makes sense. It makes sense. That's it's what crazy. it seems like, bro. Because again, why don't they do it? Look, that's the reason that I came back to El Salvador, because to me, I really see El Salvador as being the little light in this whole darkness, you know what I mean? And why? It's not just because the president is changing everything. That's one reason. The second reason is because this is a country that you and I, everybody that comes here, or even Salvadoran people, can develop into a country that what we want. Safety, you know, uh, not just safety, um, the monetary system. Look at the monetary system, completely yeah. different. It's gonna be Bitcoin now, decentralized money. Education, man, we can change all this, this whole system and make it into a real sovereign country, you know, but it takes all of us to do it. You know, talking of education, we were, oh, the graduation here in Apopa. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, what was it, four weeks ago, something mm, like that? Yeah, the premier Bitcoin graduation. The premier Bitcoin, which is a great organization, guys, that you need to check out and support. So we went to this graduation in this high school here somewhere. And in my mind, I was thinking, look at these kids right now. They don't have to worry about being recruited or kidnapped or killed by gang members. Now they can learn Bitcoin and build a future here. So even for these kids here, their, chain, their, their life has changed so much so fast. So even their, their approach to life. But... You wouldn't see the future. You'd just be like living day by day. Whatever happens, happens. But now, with Bitcoin being here, it helps you think long term, it helps you understand that. So I'm really excited for these children's future, you know? Mi Primer Bitcoin is a real good organization, man. You guys should help them out. Whatever you guys can do, that's, that's an organization that's actually doing the most here in El Salvador. Like Bitcoin Beach. What do you think of Opopa so far? What was your impression? What, what did you think when you came to Opopa? So here is the thing. I come from a very different background. Okay. Okay? Born, born and raised in Italy, I moved to the United States like nine years ago. This is very different than Florida. But now I'm getting used that this is normal. This is not just, it's not dangerous. It's just a poor area, a poor a part of the yeah. world. It's very different than Miami or Jacksonville or Orlando. Yeah. Florida, okay? I'm not scared anymore. I walk here and I'm very relaxed because I see that it's safe, it's fine. I feel way safer here in El Salvador than I used to in the United States and Florida. Imagine it, that. It is just that different. Yeah, that's crazy. So again, you're in a popa right now. Look at you. you know? I don't see any gang members, and we have all this expensive gear and the cameras, yeah. uh, everything we does in real shape. This is the Salvadorian Walk of Fame, bro. <laughs> yeah. You see where the stars are at, you know. <laughs> You know what somebody said the other day that caught my attention? El Salvador is the only country right now that's teaching financial education anywhere in the world. Nobody else is teaching financial education, but here we are because of Bitcoin. Bitcoin teaches you all this. So if we learn all this, again, the economy will rise, bro, because people are gonna think about the future now. Bitcoin helps you with that. Bitcoin helps you understand all the corruptness this world has. Mm -hmm. It opens your eyes, you know, so, Bitcoin being here in little El Salvador, again, it's gonna change dramatically, bro. I, I believe it, you know, it's gonna change so dramatically. So talking about future and education in the country, you know, I have small kids, you know, so when I moved here at the beginning, you know, my family and friends told me, oh, Francesco, why do you move in El Salvador? What future is there for your kids, you know? And I gave them my answer. So you have small children too, right? So how do you see your children growing here? What do you see for their future? Good, so I have a eight-year-old and a 10-year-old. They're two girls. Right now, they go to school in the morning. I, I put them in a, a private school. They go to school in the morning, I, and in the afternoon, I have them in classes. For example, they have acro dance, acrobics, mm. and uh, they have a Chinese teacher that goes in the afternoon to teach them Chinese. So I got them in different, different things like that. I, I believe, I believe education here, it's not 100% great yet. It's improving, but I think it will be great because of people like you, people, everybody else that are coming here to El Salvador, putting their two cents into how education should be because we want our kids to have a better future, right? Me person on a personal level, bro, I'm not a fan of education because of how education has made us into slaves. So I believe in the skills that we teach our kids. And I, I believe as more Bitcoiners are coming, there's gonna be a lot more skills implemented that we can offer to our kids here in El Salvador. 
So I, I love it, bro. I, see, I love what I'm seeing so far, you know. So guys, we talk a lot about safety. And before closing the interview with Wall, I want to ask the locals here if they also have witnesses the change that we are reporting, you know? Let's see, boots on the ground was the truth about the country. So now me and Wally will go around the Apu Penses. Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah, you said it right. right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Let's see what they think. Okay, guys, we had an incredible experience here in uh, Apopa. Wally, thank you very much for taking me into this journey into your hometown. No, thank you, actually. I, I had a great time. That, that was amazing. Guys, make sure to go and check out Wallace, even if you don't speak Spanish or you're going to learn Spanish and Bitcoin podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, leave me a comment, support us, join our groups. If you are considering moving to El Salvador or visiting El Salvador, where you can find the community there and hear from people that already are living here and learn everything from immigration, relocation, healthcare, transportation. You'll find everything in the group. Bitcoiners in El Salvador, it's on Telegram and on Facebook. You can find all the links down below in the description box. Thank you very much for watching until the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye guys. See you guys, goodbye. Bye.